My version is uh, a, a little rumpkus got started at the bar. I was like sleep deprived at the time, so I took these pills the doctor gave me, and uh, you know they're known as something, but they kind of keep you awake, and you know, and then all of a sudden you're passed out. But I was passed out during the whole thing. And then when I woke up, my feet were the other way. I knew something happened and, you know, SAG was at that time, a ticking time, I'm over there just trembling. And I said, SAG, did something happen last night? He went, you did like something happened. And then started a fight and I didn't know that nigga was going to be, you know, you know, and I went, sorry, partner. And I went on the other side of bed and fell back asleep and that was that. But uh, that's all I remember about that. <laughs> and over 30 years later, people are still talking about it. I know, it's unbelievable. We just interviewed Nobs yesterday. Uh, do you have any stories about the Nasty Boys? Yeah, I got the story of uh, how they about killed old Vinnie Torelli. You know who Vinnie Torelli is? I don't know who Vinnie Torelli is. That's, that's, a, that's Shamrock. Yeah. Oh, yes, I forgot. Of Ken course. Shamrock. Yeah, yeah. Ken, well, he was Vinnie Torelli. We were working back in uh, the South Atlantic, uh, living in Charlotte. Everybody's all steroided up. It's a bunch of young guys, man. We got Curtis Thompson and uh, and uh, uh, Chavis, the, the Tonka, the Indian, and they, all these, but and Vinnie there, the Shamrock, uh, Vinnie, and all these guys are bench pressing 500 pounds, and the just uh, the nasty boys are in there, and. Me and Matt Bourne sharing a room, and it's just, we go to the bars at night. We can't go to many bars because we've been kicked out of every single bar we go to, but we're in one of the bigger bars there one night, and and uh, Vinny's got his girlfriend there with him, and not, uh, when I say Vinny now, I mean Ken Shamrock. You people all know him, so I'll go to Shamrock, forget his real name. And uh, Nobbs is there at the bar, and he reaches reach over, he pinches her boobie, and... Oh, dang boy, Vinny goes crazy about it. But the girl is, a lot of the guys know the girl. So it's not just Vinny's girl. It's just, but, but whatever. But Vinny's going to, he's going to kill Nob. He's going after him. And the security comes and the police and they get Vinny. And, and, uh, and, and um, they're holding him. They're going to take him out. But he's, he's getting at it. So when Nob sees he's got him good, Nob gets his face. <laughs> Like this in the face, and he, like like you do with an orange thing, you know, it's a, yeah. uh, skin his face like this, ah, get him out of here. He sh shows him backwards, and when he does, then the other security, they get knobs. And they, uh, and and so they're, they're, they're going to throw them both out, and they're taking Vinny to jail, I don't know, because he's fighting, he's, he's going crazy. So they take him. And we get Curtis Thompson, we say, you get knobs, get him out of here. We're going to pay the bill, get everything straightened up, and we'll come out. We go out to the car, and kind of cars are parked together. And knobs is down under the car. Curtis Thompson's kicking the shit out of him. <laughs> he's down, he's drunker than hell, and he's down there. So we get in the car and go, go back to the room. And about, well, I guess, 3 o'clock in the morning, so the, uh, I'm sleeping. And I hear a knock at my door. And I go over and I open up the door and, and it's Shamrock's girlfriend. And I'm thinking, what she want to see the old stud here for, you know? <laughs> She's a cute girl, you know? And uh, she said, oh, Vinny's going to kill Nobs. And I say, what? Anybody, you know, I'm half asleep. And here comes, here, here comes Shamrock down the stairs. And he's coming downstairs and he falls and he just boom, 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 boom down the stairs. Then he comes and he knocks my door open. I'm butt naked. And he runs and shoves me back and he says, where's Nobs? Where's Nobs? And I know, but oh, I don't much want to tell him, you know, but I'm scared not to. <laughs> and I tell him, I uh, think he's second, third floor. I don't know what room. So he goes up. I'm doing the booking. So I get my pants up and my stuff and I get dressed as fast as I can. I go up the stairs because I know where their room is. They're on the third floor. So I'm going up the, the stairs and I hear. I can hear 
way down the hall. Pow, 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 pow. I said, oh, gosh, there's a good fight's going on. Well, apparently, uh, Shamrock went up and uh, Sags is on the phone with his wife. The big heavy telephone they used to have in the room. And he's talking to his wife. Got a long cord on there. And Nobbs is laying on the bed, passed out. Was all drunk. Legs hanging off the back of the bottom of the bed. And, and then he knocks on the door. Sags opens the door and he just shoves Sags out of the way and just jumps on the bed on top of Nobbs and just starts beating the living crap out of him. Now, this is what I hear. I'm not seeing this. I'm just hearing it coming down the hallway. You did see that Nobs was passed out earlier. No, 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 no. But, uh, but the story is Sags hit him with the phone. Back of the head, hit him with the phone, knocked him goofy out on the floor, and then Sags put the boots to him. And uh, by the time I got there, Sags was picking him up, had him waist high. And he was dragging him. He was going to throw him over. The third, three stories. He's going to throw him over. And uh, and I walk over the corner, I, and the door, and I and me and Sags, our eyes hit, and Sags just go drops him, and he goes, "Oh God, oh God," and I look at Shamrock, and his head is as big as a basketball. And you could not recognize him, no way, and all bloody. Blood was all over the walls like machine gun massacre. The blood was high as the vent there up the wall, all, all over the room, blood all over everything. And uh, knobs laying on the bed, legs hanging off from the knees down, like it, hands like this, like you bury a guy. Yeah. Blood, blood running out of his nose, running out of his mouth. Passed out. Or I don't know if he's passed out or if he's knocked out or what the deal is. But And I look at Sags and I go, call 911, you know. And I look at Sags and I say, he ain't going to make it. He ain't going to make it. And Sags goes, oh, God, oh, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Bad, bad trouble. I already had something going on. No, I don't need this, you know. Yeah. So they mentioned that they came there to get away from uh, a different territory where they had heat. They had a problem. They had a sex that I already got a problem. I already got a problem. And he's, he's just like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm saying, get, get, get help for him now. Immediately. Police. Everybody. Get, get help. Because, you know, I, said, I never have seen anything like that. I never seen a guy's head like you can't recognize him fat like that, big like that. His his brain swelled up or something. I said he he ain't gonna make it. So they take him, and uh, and so that's pretty much the story. That uh, they wake up the next morning, Sags got his hand in the bucket of water. Nobs goes, yeah, what in the day? Yeah, what the hell of a day? You don't even realize nothing happened. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. So what was the police uh, involvement of that? Uh, they came and they took they, they took Vinny uh, to the hospital and we all vouch for Sags that he came in, he came to my room, he came in there, he bolted his way in the door, he, uh, he meant to kill knobs and, all, and so nobody got arrested. Okay. Yeah, nobody got arrested, and then just and after that, the boys just went around making sure Shamrock's here. I'm over here. Shamrock's there. I'm over there. <laughs> you don't want to be Shamrock's here. I'm over here. <laughs> you don't want that one. <laughs> and they never saw each other again until years later. Right, right. So it had some years to cool off a little bit. Although we did interview Shamrock, and I don't think he's fully cooled off about it just yet. <laughs> Yeah, it was during the time I was in South Atlantic Pro Wrestling. This wasn't in, in, in Nelson's. It was after okay. Nelson had stopped. And then there was George Scott started one up. And I was carrying the strap for them. I ended up carrying the strap for them. And uh, I remembered uh, uh, we were at a club. 
and I was with a friend of mine who set up the ring. I mean, he's a nice guy, you know, he's hanging out with the boys. And uh, I, me and him became friends and we traveled sometimes together and he, he had his, his, uh, his wife or fiance uh, with him and we were at this Plum Crazies. And we were sitting up at the bar and they, you know, they were already there. We came in and they'd had a few drinks and they were tipsy and they were messing around and they reached over and grabbed her, her, her tit. And uh, my buddy goes, hey, come on. And she was really mad. She was upset, like, huh? Like, what are you doing? And she's welded down. And so I didn't say anything, you know, because you don't get in the middle of the boys, you know, you just whatever, let it roll. Well, he did it again. And now we're talking about, this is borderline rape. Because, <laughs> you know, he was grabbing her. And it was like, she made it very clear that it wasn't okay. Well, then my friend was a little more upset, which I couldn't blame him, but you can't, you can't take these guys. And so then I said something. I was kind of laughing. Oh, come on, you guys, man, enough. All right, all right, all right, all right. You had your fun. And uh, they were like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Are you sleeping with her? Are you know, and it was like, oh, man, whatever. You know, he ignored it, and he did it again. And that's, I lost it. And I went to go after him, and as soon as I did, because of what was going on, uh, uh, the bartender had told the bouncer, which I didn't know at the time, that these guys were doing that, and they were going to kick him out. Well, just as that happened, the bouncers had, luckily, had just come up, or otherwise I'd been in jail. Um, come up and saw him do it again and I went at him and the, this dude was a big dude, 260, big bounce. He grabbed me from behind and squeezed me and said, hey Ken, it's me man, chill out. And I was like, I wanted to kill him. Well, the other bouncers kicked him out, told them guys to get out. And so they ended up kicking him out. Well, I was fuming, big time fuming. So I knew we were staying at the hotel downtown. I knew that's where they were at. So. As soon as they let me go, they was talking, and I said, all right, man, I'll see you later. Heading out. This is probably a half hour afterwards. I went to the hotel, and I went to knock on the door because I was going to get in their face and say, listen, that's uncalled for. You know, you want to end up in prison? That's exactly the what's going to happen. So nobody answered, and I knew they were in there. So I ended up kicking the door down. And as I kicked the door down, the other one, the, the, sh the kind of shorter one that was a heavier set one, uh, no, I'm saying. He's laying on the bed. The blonde haired one is yeah. laying on the bed, right? Face down. And I, so I just kind of like paused, and that's the last thing I remember. Now, from what I was told, um, was that when I came through the door, the, the big and one went, was hiding because obviously they were afraid because I was pissed. And the other one just laid on the bed. It was like, oh, he ain't coming, he can't get in. Well, when I came through the door, the big one had grabbed this phone and the phone on the bottom had a steel metal plate underneath it, right? And so as I came through, he hit me in the back of the head. I went, I don't remember, then I went down and then he put the boots to me, both of them. They had steel toe boots. They cracked my sternum, broke my nose, pretty much almost killed me. Then drug me outside and were going to throw me over the top of the rail. They were on the second floor onto the ground. And... Um, uh, one of the guys came in, uh, I forget his name, an older guy, and he said, don't, hey man, you guys, you guys need to stop. He stopped them from doing it, otherwise I wouldn't be here today. Well, went to the hospital. As I'm going to the hospital, they had to revive me because I had passed, you know, I mean, I was dying. Um, they did that much damage. Yeah. So I get home and I was laid up for months recovering and in my head I was like I'm gonna kill him when I see him I'm gonna kill him I'm gonna end their days and especially the big one because the big one was the one that was that I kept hearing talking smack right well we I passed they were leaving the next day to go to the WWF and so my path went to a different direction I was going to Japan I was doing things over there I ended up in doing the fighting over there and then of course came back to the States, started fighting here. But the whole time all this was going on, I kept hearing them guys saying how they beat me up, how they how he beat me up one-on-one. -on -one. Like we were facing each other and he just beat me yeah, up. Because he claims the uh, knobs was passed out or something. Yes, and yeah, and that's that's the absolute, that's the only truthful thing that he said was that when I went in the door, knobs was passed out. But he wasn't passed out for real because he jumped up as soon as this the jackass hit me from behind, 
they both started putting the boots to me, right? After I was out, there was no need to do that. He'd already knocked me out with the phone, right, from behind. So the reason why I was so angry and so really wanted to get at them was because of the, the intent that they had. It wasn't like I didn't know them. It wasn't like we didn't hang out together. It wasn't like we didn't talk or weren't friends, at least I thought, and they were wrong. And for them to go to that extent, to know somebody and do something like that, I just, to me, I can't put that in, I don't know how anybody could do that. Because you wrestled with, you were one of the boys. With yeah, well, even if you didn't like somebody, but you're still around them, to, 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 to go to that, just, to me, I don't know how somebody can do that unless they're, they're not normal. Let's hear about the Shamrock. Everyone wants to know about the Shamrock, don't you? Oh, yeah. uh, no one really want to hear about it. I was drunker than hell. I got in the fight, and then he came looking for us at our hotel, and then he found a room from Colonel Parker, and then he bashed on the door trying to get in, and I was passed out. I was passed out on sleeping pills, never woke up. Next day, I woke up, my feet's in the wrong position, so I knew something was wrong, and I said, Zag, did something happen last night? And he went, you're damn right something happened. Ken Shamrock wants to kill you, he came in here. I had to protect you. I threw him over. I was going to throw him over the third story balcony. The cops were here. Blah, 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 blah. I went, sorry, buddy. And I turned around and went back to sleep. <laughs> well, let's set the record straight on something. Colonel Parker told me that he actually called you guys and notified you in advance that Ken Shamrock... He did not. Him. He's a liar. <laughs> he did not. He went, this is what, this is what really happened. He was he, he because got, you guys beat him over the head he with got, that phone. Apparently his head was like swollen. Nobody beat him. I was out cold. So sag hit him with some sag him with be busted in the room. You're breaking an entry. Oh hey, oh, I it's agree called with you street there. fighting. Anything happens, it, it happens. You know what I mean? So whatever happened, happened. But I was sleeping through all of it, so I don't know. But I know he went to Colonel Parker's room and we know what Colonel Parker did. They're right up there, Mill 365, right up there. It's okay, Jenkins. There's Ken Hannah by the by the, the, the shirt. Did you ever see Shamrock since that incident? Is what? Did you ever run into Shamrock again since yeah. that incident? Yeah, I, yeah, we ran into him a couple of times. Actually, the last time he shook my hand, he asked me how I was doing. I don't think he didn't shake sacks his hand, but he shook my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.